Hello folks, I am Ed Overstreet and welcome to uh, the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. I process, um, I worked on uh, M51 the last two nights and I'm going to be processing it using uh, PixInsight. Uh, the gear that I used uh, was an ASI 533 MC camera. Uh, it's a one-shot color camera and I the uh, OTA was a uh, Celestron 8-inch Edge HD uh, reflector. So let's uh, head over to Pix Insight and put this boat in the boat water. In the water. <music> testing, testing. I want to make sure the sound's okay. I'm having sound problems, so if it's sounding funky, uh, I'm not sure what uh, has changed to cause that, but hang in there. Hopefully it'll clear itself up. Um, the first thing that I want to do actually before Pix Insight is I want to bring up the um, file folder and go to Astro 2033 April and uh, I imaged with two telescopes last night. I used a reflector and I did M106 wide field and there were three galaxies all in all included in the wide field. And then I did M51 the Whirlpool with the uh, 533 MC and Edge. So we're gonna be processing this one. The first thing I wanna do is change the name it's not a big deal, but you'll kind of see why in a minute. To blink, Oop, can't spell, hands on the wrong key. Open up a new folder and call this S, S, F, S for subflame, subframe selector. I think it's going to be one of those days. And a new folder for light lights okay so right now all of my images are in the blink folder just because I changed it and uh, I have 159 182nd long uh, exposed images taken with an L pro filter uh, over the last two nights so um, I'm going to push that out of the picture and minimize it you may need to come back to it and let's head over to Pix Insight. All right, now, first thing that I want to do with Pix Insight is to go to Process, All Processes, Processes and Cosmetic Correction. And you don't, I don't make any changes other than I open up Use Auto Detect, check it, and check Hot Sigma, and make sure it's on three pixels. I'm going to drag this over and give it a name and we can call it COS for cosmetic correction. How about just CC for cosmetic correction and we'll need that when we run the weighted batch processing script. So we can close that out. Uh, let's blink the images and look through them and get rid of those that uh, we don't think will enhance but rather will probably take away from the image. If it's not going to help the image, it's my thinking it's going to hurt the image. So I hate to delete the investment I have in these pictures, but the outcome, if because of deleting poor looking quality images is a better overall outcome, then uh, obviously that's the thing I got to do. So we're opening them. <laughs> and we're going to perform a uh, automatic stretch to all of these so they'll uh, have the same luminosity quality or characteristics. So let's check this uh, histogram icon. Okay, uh, I'm going to make this a little bigger. 
In fact, um, I want to zoom in on some of these stars up here. And I'm going to kind of focus on these stars that are towards the outside of the image where I'm going to have the most distortion. And I'm going to start um, blinking through these images. And I'm really looking for stars that are funky or stars that are oblong. And uh, I'm going to delete those. So I'm going to start by uh, clicking on the right arrow and then uh, I think I'm just going to use the page down key or not the page down the arrow down key and down here this second box in that has a red X uh, when I come to an image I'm going to get rid of I'm going to click on this and it will remove it from this list so that all I have left are the ones I'm going to want to move to the SFS folder, where I will then take them into the subframe selector. So let's continue going down, looking at this star. You can see where the dithering's going on. So far, so good. There's some that will get a little funky. That's fine. That's not. So I'm going to delete that one. Go back. Okay. All right. We are done. There's some that I let go through. But um, the subframe selector will catch those. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move these to uh, the subframe selector box. So there only there will only be one in the blink box or blink folder. All right. So let's go ahead and eliminate those. Close out blink. Let's go to process, all processors, go down to the subframe selector it's towards the bottom. <clears throat> and let's load our files. So blink, we've got one, SFS, we got the rest. And I know there are some... Uh, funky looking uh, images in that mix. All right, and we're going to create an output directory and we're going to call that light. And that's where we're going to have our keepers. I'm going to change my scale uh, to 0.54, which is uh, the combination of this camera pixel size, I think it's 3.79, um, and uh, 1,422 field, uh, focal length of the Celestron Edge with 0.7x reducer. So that gives me a arc second pixel uh, size of 0.54. Uh, electrons, one point, I'm going to do two. I'm not sure really what it is. Uh, I'm going to pick 14 bits. Uh, everything else stays the same. I've got a folder for it, so let's run it. Okay, it takes a little time. I put this on pause. Uh, it defaults to PSF signal weight, which is the measurement that uh, uh, the subframe selector uh, defaults to. But uh, when I'm using the uh, reflector 8-inch edge, 
uh, I've found that using either full well half maximum star size or just stars uh, gives me a pretty good uh, indication of both the number of stars in the image and the signal that I'm likely to get. So <clears throat> let's uh, start with stars and uh, of course this at the very top uh, that means there would be 34 stars in the image. I don't have a single image that has 34 stars. Uh, I've got one that's got uh, 33 stars. I'm reading what's in the box. But I've got several that have under uh, 20 stars. So uh, here's a bunch under 22 as a matter of fact. So one of the ways that you can select these is by just clicking on the uh, uh, the, the point. You'll see a circle. Just click on it and then it will uh, add these. Uh, isn't it interesting? It's the first one, two, three, first of the three images. And of course that's when the telescope was the lowest in the sky. Uh, and it's also, it has a little, probably a little bit to do with the fact that uh, where the light pollution is at its greatest, has its greatest effect on your image. But I'm going to uncheck those, and rather than waste my time going through all of these, I'm going to go over here under Approval, and since this measurement graph is stars, then I'm going to type in stars, I want to keep Uh, that uh, are greater than, let's make it 20, let's make it 22. And then I'm going to select this. And it's checked for me. Remember I went ahead and checked those, so it went ahead and unchecked them. Um, so it's going to select all of these pictures, all of these images that had uh, fewer than 22 stars. So I'm just going to work with the ones that had <clears throat> 23 or more stars. So I'm going to go up here under Output and select Output. I've already uh, picked the folder, the light folder, and uh, let's go ahead and save to that. Okay, uh, we can close out now of the subframe selector. And uh, now it's time to, uh, I'm curious, let's bring up my finder and let's go to subframe selector. I'm curious as to how many we actually ended up keeping. And we have uh, 158 items. No, we need our lights. And we have 120 items. So we purged uh, the difference, 38 images. It's a lot of time, a lot of data. But uh, I think the output will warrant why I did that and why one should consider doing that. Okay, now it's time to open up the set, the weighted batch processing script. And the weighted batch processing script is opening. And let's go ahead and open those lights. And they're here. I am curious. Let's go over here. That's six hours of exposure time then. 120 frames. So that's, that's good. Uh, let's open up our bias. And... I'm going to need to go to the 19th 
and uh, or actually the 18th that's when I took bias frames no that's the vixen here we go that's when I took the uh, edge bias uh, and darks Oop, back up and I'll go ahead and get the darks and I'll go back to bias uh, and we have 20 of those actually we have more than 20 we've got 9 uh, 240 second and 11 uh, do, 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 do. let's delete those I don't think that's yeah, it is right. Let me just delete this. And I'll do the next best thing. I'm going to uh, open up the weighted batch processing script that I ran. And I'm just going to open up the 180 second darks because I accidentally must have deleted some of those darks. So I have a hundred, my, I already have a master dark uh, that I can use. I'm going to go ahead and just get a master flat. I could, uh, it speeds things up when you have it already done. So these are the masters from the 18th. My gear stays out. Um, uh, wrong. Yeah, this is right. right there so we have a master flat dark bias and I'm gonna get rid of those I don't 25 to 6 to 7 to 8. I'm not sure why they're wider just uh, we just need 25 is a gracious plenty, so remove selected. Okay. So we're good to go there. I need the cosmetic correction script, which is CC from up here. We're going to apply that to all frames. It's a color filter array. We're going to select RGGB because ZWO cameras do not write the R the uh, Bayer mosaic pattern to the uh, uh, EXIF files or the headers so you can't expect them to read something that's not going to be there I want to apply that we need to go ahead and click on our flats select culture filter array separate CFA flat scaling yes apply that to all the pictures while we're applying, we want the maximum quality with no compromises. I don't know why anyone would pick anything but that. Uh, let's select where we're going to. Uh, let's see, we need to go back to here. And we're just going to call this for weighted batch uh, processing. And I'm going to number it one because I may run it again, try different things, and that would be number two. Uh, okay, what else do I need to do? Let's go to post calibration and enable drizzle. And one time, uh, the scale will be one, drop shrinks one, function is square, uh, apply to all groups. I only have one group, but I kind of anal. I do that anyway. I'm going to purge that. So we have our biases. Actually, I'm just going to remove that, uh, clear those, and I'll go pull up a master bias from uh, since I already have masters, and they're just two days old. They'll be just fine. So we have masters for 180. Let's run diagnostic. Everything looks fine. 
and let's go ahead and click this off and I'll be back when it's done bingo okay um, we have finished the weighted bats batch processing run so let's close this out and exit and then let's uh, load this picture and see what we have it's like Christmas don't know what quite's underneath the tree uh, but we're hopeful Santa was good to us Let's see, we want the drizzled and the auto cropped image. <clears throat> Let's bring up the process screen transfer function. And this is the crop area. You can see the crop lines. And this is M51 maybe and let's unlink the channels for right now and so there's our starting point which looks okay we have some gradients to deal with the uh, first thing that I think I'm going to do is run the blur exterminator uh, this is a, uh, a process that was created by Russell Croman and uh, I'll put a link to his website yep let's do that so let's go to process all processes and whoops bring up blur exterminator I am I have the stars sharpened all the way to the right and the halos drop to minus 30 uh, by default that's how I last used it and um, I'm gonna leave everything else alone and not going to do a real-time preview I'm just going to gamble because I use this these settings for the edge and the ASI 533 in the past and otherwise I would have done a real-time preview before applying this <clears throat> okay that did nicely <clears throat> I no longer uh, shoot luminance uh, images and Blur Exterminator kind of has uh, made that happen. So I'm going to invest in a dark filter so that I can put that in my filter wheel and I can take my bias and darks. Since I have a rolling shutter on my ZWO cameras, that'll work out great. But there is no need for me to take a luminance filter because in the past, the only reason why I did that was to run deconvolution, sharpen my stars in my loom, uh, and uh, add some structure or detail to my galaxy. And then uh, I would add that sharpening and star effect to the RGB channel after I had uh, got the colors right. But don't have to do that anymore. So no more uh, trying to get a good point spread function star none of that thank you Russell Croman for a blur exterminator so we don't need that actually I probably should do this bring up blur exterminator again and let's uh, just put this icon over here and we'll uh, 
build an icon set. So, uh, let's rename this RGB Lurk Exterminator. Let's make a clone and build a history of our work. Now, let's save this as a project in case we have to, or we get shut down for some reason so we don't lose our work. We want to go to the edge, um, and we're just going to call this M51 and put this in our root folder. Okay. <clears throat> and I think it would be a good time to... Uh, did I save that twice? I uh, sure did. Okay, I think that would be a good time now to run DBE. So let's go to process, all processes, dynamic background extraction, and I'm going to go ahead and reset this. I'm going to change my tolerance to 2.000, shadows to 6, and I'm going to keep smoothing factor to, I'm going to move this up to 3. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to change this to 20. And I'm going to generate. Let's uh, get rid of this one, this one, this one, anything near my galaxy where there may be some nebulosity. Ah. Uh, Uh, let's get that one, that one, that one. Let's see some stuff streaking down here. Okay, let's make sure we don't have any bright stars in any of the sample spots. And we look okay. So let's, uh, make a copy of this and we're going to call this DBE X uh, DBE just we're going to save some process icons um, and let's run it ah back down here let's um, use division um, let's replace the target let's see what the background model looks like and so let's run it. All right. We have um, rightfully gone after a, a gradient from green to red. That was pretty easy to see there. Let's uh, stretch. That looks much better. So let's close this out. But we're going to run it again and this time we're going to pick subtraction because there's something going on up here at the top I think I don't like and eh, let's see what this let's just try this again Edward uh, we want to replace the target in image so let's try it again <clears throat> And, yeah, this mess up here. Okay, good. So, I uh, like it. So, let's get rid of this. So, we have DBE uh, set. Now, what I would...
probably do if it were not for noise exterminator what I would probably do now I'm thinking is run a multilinear transformation because this is a very noisy image but because I do have noise exterminator that I will eventually run uh, it'll be one of the last things that I do to this image um, I'm gonna leave the noise as is all right so let's make uh, a copy of this we're going to call add dve i'm making this tutorial as though someone's using pixinsight for the very first time or they're pretty new at doing this and want a fast and simple way to produce an image uh, that shows data yeah we got some nice dust going down here uh, and up here I wonder if I'll be able to keep that we're gonna find out okay uh, it's time to run the uh, spectral photometric color calibration so let's go up to all processes uh, and go down to spectra Photometric color calibration. Alrighty, we need to set a preview window up in an area where there are few or there are no stars. So I'm going to go up here where there's a square with a shadow. That's the preview window. Or you can go up here to preview and create new. But I'm going to take that icon and Let's find a good place where there's some decent background. And let's just try right here. And let's identify that background. Let's go to region of interest from Puri view. And there we go. Now, I am using a IR UV cut filter. Um, this is a ZWO with a Sony filter, our Sony sensor. So I have, this is my choice for this one shot color camera. Um, I'm not going to use the ideal QE curve. It might even work better if I did, but I do have the 533 uh, Sony sensor and that's listed. There's the 411, 455. 461, 533, 571. I also own the 183 one-shot color camera, so that's included here. Now, not all cameras, sensors are included, but they have quite a few. So I'm going to select that. Um, my catalog has already been set so and loaded, so I'm going to now drag, drop, and apply this. Okie doke. Look how few stars I have. Wow. All right. So we have our color. Let's link these channels now. And uh, we have our color. By the way, this performed background neutralization. Uh, in the past, if I was running color calibration, I would have to do background neutralization first. But because this is included in the spectrophotometric color calibration process, um, I don't need to do that. And once you neutralize the background, you can unlink these or link these channels back up to get a better rendering of your color. So we can get rid of this preview. You can do that by going up to previews and remove it. Or there's another box that has a shadow cast just like this one they ought to put them side by side and if you click that it removes the preview window so i am ready to uh, stretch this image and so what i'm going to do is save this process give it a name 
and let's line those up nicely. Okay, now let's give this a name. Spectrophotometric color calibration. Let's put this over here. Oh, didn't need that there. Actually, I deleted my uh, first image that I saved. So uh, let's go ahead and save this project. And our progress so far. All right, now um, it's time to put a stretch on this. I'm going to make uh, a copy and on this first copy I'm going to stretch this using the script easy processing script soft easy soft stretch and that's what we're going to do on clone clone and this is what it came up with I'm going to go ahead and stretch it so on this very first one we're going to call this identifier e z stretch and uh, we'll set this over here for a minute and on this one we're going to bring up the histogram transformation tool and we're going to make sure we've picked the right image which is the uh, SPCC clone image. Let's unstretch it. Let's create a real-time preview and uh, let's uh, drag this mid-tone slider to the left and apply that. And let's reset and let's apply this again and reset let's drag it over again incrementally here and and apply that and reset let's drag this down a little and bring this up some actually we can't because this is starting to slope up about right there and i'll be clipping some data this is also Needs to go back. Okay. Once either the red, green, or the blue channel starts rising, if you move the slider to the right of that, you're going to clip the data that's to the left. Also, it's ever so slight, but the green, all these three channels, actually, here's the red lane down here. Once you start moving this to where there is a slope, and you can um, you can see this uh, better when you uh, increase the size of your viewing area. So I'm going to drag this down a little more like to there. And I'm going to put this here. So I have not lost anything. And I'm going to apply that. And this is my stretch. So we're going to uh, close this. Oops. And we don't need the real time preview. So this is our easy stretch. And this is the stretch where I know for sure I didn't clip anything. Um, using the uh, 
histogram transformation. And the other stretch we could have performed, um, I don't use it on galaxies, uh, but the generalized hyperbolic stretch uh, can clearly be used on galaxies. I really like to use it uh, with nebula, but uh, another day. So here are two stretches, and I'm going to go with the one that I did uh, with the uh, histogram transformation, but we'll save this for old time's sake. So let's uh, kind of zoom in and see how bad our noise is. Whoa. That's pretty rough stuff. So at this point, I'm going to, uh, we're stretched. I'm going to remove the stars. So I'm going to go up to process, all processes. And I'm going to bring up star exterminator. Uh, Starnet 2 works just fine. Uh, Russell Croman created this star exterminator and it, uh, it's a, doddle to use. I love it. So uh, let's go ahead and drag and drop and let it do its magic. Okay, doke. I'm just going to rename this stars. I'm not going to make a clone. We'll put those over here. And I am going to rename this M51. I do plan to make a clone of that and I'm going to put the clone over here. So next thing I want to do is make a luminance layer and I'm just going to call this loom and I'm going to set this over here. Uh, we can get rid of, oh, let's bring up Star Exterminator. Uh, let's bring up Histogram Transformation first. I needed to uh, save that icon. And then let's uh, process, all process, and let's go down to Star Exterminator and bring that up. Okay, let's drag this. Let's drag this. This is histogram transformation, so we're just going to call this histo trans. Bring it over here. And this will be star exterminator. And so these are the processes that I've used so far. Let me get rid of that. So now we're going to bring up LRGB combination, process, all processes. And I got this from a YouTuber entering into space. And it's a very clever way to uh, add saturation. Uh, his YouTube channel is Entering Into Space, and I'll try to find a link to that in the description for this video. So let's go to, uh, where did I say I was going? Uh, oh, LRGB combination, right here. Before I forget, let's just call this um, LRGB combination. And bring it up here. So um, I'm going to drag the loom layer right here. Then I'm going to turn off the R, the G, and the B. Uh, I want to keep the inherent astrometric solution uh, in the image, but I've already, when I did Star Exterminator, I already removed the plate solving info. I don't need it. I needed it to do the uh, spectrophotometric color calibration, but I don't need it now. Don't check anything. Just drag saturation to the left to about 360. And 
let's zoom up a little bit on this and let's start saturating we're going to do this a couple of times let's drag it all right there's one time let's drag it again there's two times I don't know that we need to saturate it anymore but let's bring it up to say 430 420 and drag it again okay I wanted to run this without the stars because I found that this will really over cook the stars and uh, and to me it makes them look very unnatural like so um, we have added some saturation I wish we had more blue so let's see if we can enhance that I'm going to uh, uh, we save this so I'm going to close this out and we're going to go to process all processes and go down to I think it's saturation uh, it's not what is it um, color saturation okay and I don't need this to be that big and so uh, I'm going to create a real-time preview I'm going to draw an anchor point there there I'm looking at the spectrum down here and I'm going to isolate the reds the yellows, the greens into different shades, getting ready into teal, blues, violet, and the two different reds. So I want to pull on the blues here. I'm going to drag those up and let's apply that. And let's apply that again. Probably a little bit too much. And that's as, about as good as I'm going to be able to do. Oh, it's too much. Look at my background. All right, I'm going to go back. One. Oh, that gets... And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this luminance layer and I'm going to add the luminance layer. So the only thing I'm going to be applying the saturation to, I'm making a mask, is this, um, is this galaxy. So I'm going to, I don't need to show the mask. I'm just going to uh, do this. So I'm going to bring up the saturation. Did I already shut it down? I did. So we're going to go back to process, all processes, color, I'm sitting here looking right at it. And let's create another window. And this way I won't affect the background, only the uh, galaxy. So let's uh, drag it or let's apply it. Can't drag to a preview. And Let's uh, actually put an anchor point here and bring it up a little more and do this one more time. Okay, that's all I'm going to do with this without it getting funky looking. I'm going to leave the mask on, but I'm going to invert it so that the only thing I'm going to work on now is the background. And uh, I'm going to bring up Curves Transformation. Deck on it. Let's bring up Color Saturation again. And let's drag this triangle to the desktop and make another process. And we'll call this Now we can delete this. 
and bring this over here with our processes and we're going to bring up now curves transformation with the mask still intact let's create another so uh, we have the background and that's basically what we're going to affect although it will have an effect if on the galaxy we can bring that back out so I'm just going to drop the uh, I'm going to use the RGB and I'm going to pull this down just a little bit to darken the background you see it is having an effect on the galaxy so I'm going to go back up to the mask invert it and now I'm going to bring this up just a little bit where I kind of brighten the mask but not the background then I'm going to go back and I'm going to invert it again and pull the uh, and pull the background back down a little bit and apply this and then we're going to go back mask and invert and bring this back up and apply maybe apply one more time Okay, let's go over and grab the saturation. Let's reset first. And then let's saturate just the galaxy a little bit more. And apply. That's good. We're going to create a real funky image if we're not careful. But you get the idea of what you're able to do with these tools. Um, that gone it. Let's go back up. Let's get rid of the real time. Let me go back up to curves transformation. And reset. Drag this icon down here. Let's give it a name. And we can, you know what? I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to, um, I'm going to invert the mask again. I see kind of a reddish cast to my background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up saturation. It was already up, and I'm going to drag that down to my background. I'm going to kind of desaturate the background some. Let me bring up my real time preview. And um, not a lot, but some. And apply that. And then I'm going to uh, bring up my, let's reset, bring up my RGB and bring this down just a little bit more, the background. I don't want it black, black. Okay, now here we are noisy mercy so I am going to remove the mask let me look at this real quick here all right I'm going to remove the mask and apply noise reduction my thoughts though are to leave the mask and only apply noise reduction to the background I don't want to compromise the detail and I don't mind some noise but I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the mask show you how powerful this uh, noise reduction tool is and we're going to go down to no I swear I can't hold a mouse to noise exterminator right here and before I forget drop that and set the identifier. Okay, folks, so far, everything that I've shown you is part of the PixInsight suite of processes, except the Star Exterminator and Noise Exterminator. And these have to be purchased. Those, again, will be a link provided to these in uh, the description of this video 
but Russell Crowman has really done an outstanding job both in extracting stars and in building this um, noise reduction algorithm. It's super, super cool. So let's zoom in and watch it do its thing and let's give it an application. Wow. Pretty cool. Let's go back and put now, after, before, after. Now it does compromise some of the galaxies. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try this. I'm going to go back and uh, I'm going to take this um, luminance mask and I'm going to apply this layer again and I'm going to invert it so that I'm just working on the background and I'm just curious to see how this works oh yes this I like better because it really applied it to the background but it didn't overdo my galaxy so I still have some much finer detail in the galaxy arm. So um, I like the mask uh, present. So let's uh, remove the mask now and uh, let's kind of rest the galaxy for a few minutes. We can close noise exterminator. Let's bring up our stars and let's take a look at those. And uh, let's see first what kind of color we have. I think the color looks fine. The only thing that I think I'm going to do is run. I'm not even sure I'm going to run. Yeah, I may do this run morphological transformation. It really doesn't even need it. The stars were reduced in size by the uh, uh, this is called morphological transformation, but I'm going to change the name to star star size reduction because this is really what it does. And I'll put this over here. Uh, I'm going to um, make five iterations, and I'm going to pick five elements five elements and I'm going to use uh, morphological selection and let's give it a rip that was too much so let's go back and let's do Let's actually do dilation maximum. I'm curious to see. We could probably increase these, making them round. Let's go to seven elements and uh, five iterations. And so let's give this a go. You don't want to do that. So let's reduce that. And let's go back to erosion minimum and keep everything else the same and let's try that lost everything we don't want that so we're going to save this oh we already did star reduction and uh, this is a good tool to use and let's uh, line our icons up I'm anal about certain things I don't think we need to add saturation. I don't think we need to do anything else. Let's just add them back to our galaxy. So let's just put this back over where it belongs. And let's bring up another process called pixel math. And we're going to use a single expression. So RGBK. Uh, you can use the expression editor and you can click on we want to add M51 to stars. You can type it in yourself if you want 
or you can click on M51 plus stars. And that's what we want to do. So that's the equation. We're adding the two together. Uh, under the expression, I'm sorry, under the destination, we're going to create a new image and we want the color space to be the same as the target, but I'm going to go ahead and put RGB color and that's it. Everything else stays the same. And so let's bring up our galaxy and just drag and drop. <clears throat> and there we have it. We've got our M51. We're going to say this as <clears throat> pixel math and close this out. Uh, let's see, we had forgot to put this in the order. If anybody wants these uh, process icons, I can send them to you. What you do is you go to process, down at the bottom, process icons, save process icons. And I'm going to call these M51 tutorial. And if you send me an email, and I'll add my email address, which YouTube doesn't like me to do, uh, then you can, um, I'll email them to you. So uh, that's that. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with it so far. I may have overdone some of the, I did, some of the saturation, but... Uh, there's M51 from my backyard, taken the last two nights. I hope everybody has a great weekend. If it's weekend, if it's Saturday in your neck of the woods, and I catch you later on the next video, which is going to be a mono processing of uh, M101. So uh, be cool, be nice to somebody, and have a great day.